everybody. I'm Cassidy, one of your Indianapolis Colts cheerleaders, and you're watching the Believe in Colts podcast. Welcome back to Believe in Colts. I'm Lawrence Owen. With me, as usual, is my guy, Gerard Powers. And this is a special. We're going to try something a little bit different. This will be our third episode walking in during the week where we talk about just the NFL in general. Gerard, this is a little bit different, man. Uh, what, do you, what do you think? Do you, do you think this could be something that uh, uh, maybe maybe Colts fans and, and NFL fans in general could get, get into? No, I think so for sure. I think we definitely got to start just talking about the NFL in general uh, on our weekly Believe in Coach podcast. Uh, I know everybody loves to hear us talk about the Colts, but, you know, the Colts are not the only team that we watch every Sunday. So uh, it'll be fun to talk about some other things that's going on as well. Absolutely. And the first thing I want to talk about going into uh, the NFL general talk was Sunday night football, the Kansas City Chiefs, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Oh my God, what a game. Talk about how Patrick Mahomes and this Chiefs team bounced back from an embarrassing loss, right? (laughs) Let's face it, (laughs) them, that was an embarrassing (laughs) loss to the Indianapolis Colts. And Patrick Mahomes was out there doing Patrick Mahomesian stuff. All right, I just stole that word from somebody. I can't remember exactly who, Some, some, some sports media guy, but Mahomesian. All right, he's out there. Throwing it this way, throwing it this way, dodging tackles and and sacks and finding a way to lob a ball to somebody for a first down, stuff like that. What do you think of of Patrick Mahomes and the way he come back in that game? I think Patrick Mahomes during that Bucks game kind of let the league know who, who again, uh, like reminded everybody like who he really is. You know, at the end of the day. I think there was a lot of questions with the Chiefs on how they were going to look without Tyreek Hill and all these things. And I think he's playing this year like he's taking it personal, like he's trying to prove a point. Uh, You see him arguing on the sideline with coaches a little bit. He's starting to show like this fire side to him that we haven't seen before. Uh, But just to talk about the the Bucks game a little bit now I did not expect that game to go like that how fast the Chiefs kind of just jumped on them I mean we're talking about a Bucks defense that's loaded got talent everywhere one of the best defenses in football um so to see the Chiefs come out there and and kind of just jump on them as fast as they did man I count it kind of lets you know how scary this Chiefs team can be you know uh late in the year when things really matter into that, I just want to remind everybody that football is back, as you know, and Bet Online remains your number one source for all your football betting needs this season. You'll find the latest odds, matchup info, player news, and game trends. As your continued source for all sports wagering info, Bet Online features live betting, free contests, live scores, and giveaways all season long. Always the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports and events like. Major League Baseball, MMA, tennis, boxing, even golf. Head to betonline.ag to join and receive your 100% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure to use promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, to receive your rewards. Bet online, where the game starts. Well, that... I mean, what went for what what went wrong for the Chiefs last week? Uh, this past week went right for him. I mean, mm-hmm. right off the bat, kick return, fumble, Chiefs recover it. <laughs> right? Uh, we, we we know how that feels, and that is a game changing play at the beginning of a game, right? No question, no question. I tell everybody kind of relaxes a little bit as a fan when the special teams is on the field and then you get mad when something happened but it's important that's what people that's what they preach every monday in that meeting when you come back how important uh those special team plays is and you, you fumble down there and they recover just think of how big of a game-changing play that is so like you said everything that went wrong for the chiefs went wrong when uh they played the Colts, and it just seems like their luck got right back on their side uh when they played the bucks last week Oh, I'm sorry. Sunday night football. <laughs> yeah, Sunday night football. Here, here's here's the deal. I, I I was watching. Tom Brady didn't look like Tom Brady to me. I think he threw to the mole people at least six times. Okay, uh, throwing it into the dirt. Right, uh, with no mm-hmm. pressure. You know, a uh, guy there trying to throw it to him, and he throws it two yards into the dirt in front of the player. Um, 
Do you think that's just a one-off from Tom Brady, or could that be uh, a sign of an issue uh, for him or the team? I don't want to say that Tom is having chemistry issues. I think all the reports came out, you know, how he missed half a training camp, you know, kind of been in and out. Uh, you've been hearing a bunch of stuff been going on as far as his personal life or whatnot. But it does – it don't look like the same Tom. It does look like he's – I, I don't know, like it, like something might be up, something might not be how it's supposed to be or whatnot. But I think uh, a lot of people forget that um, freaking uh, Mike Evans didn't play, right? He didn't. He no, didn't he play played. Right? He oh, played. Mike did play. Mike, oh, yeah, he, right. I'm, I'm tripping. Mike, Mike did play. Yeah, Mike, I don't, I don't Mike, know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure uh, what was up this week, but their offense did not look you know, like the typical Tampa Bay offense, how we how we've been seeing them since Tom arrived. I mean, they didn't look explosive. Um, they, they couldn't run the ball. Fournette was bottled up. Uh, I think the Chiefs just did a, a, a good job in, in taming those guys. And you got to think over the past few years, these guys have played each other on some big stages. Uh, so it, it's a little rivalry, I think, within that in itself. But it looked like the Chiefs definitely learned from the coach game and uh, came out with a different different energy level uh, than the Bucks had. Let's talk about Monday Night Football. Oh, wow. I did not predict that San Francisco would beat the pants off of the Rams. That was something that was – I thought it would be a decent game uh, because it usually is uh, when, when it's played in San Francisco uh, with these two two divisional rivals. But 24-9? to nine? Are you kidding me? San Francisco is I, – I don't see this as an offensive team with Jimmy Garoppolo back there at quarterback yet. They put 24 points up against the Rams, and the Rams, let's face they it. Got some I mean, yeah, they got some guys <laughs> over there. And then on the flip side, Matt Stafford was being harassed the entire night by this San Francisco defense. Uh, well, what would you think of the game? I think D'Amico Ryan, uh, defensive coordinator for the 49ers, is going to be a head coach uh, pretty soon in the NFL. I, th- I want to say this is maybe his third year, fourth year as a coordinator, maybe his third year as a coordinator. And he's done a phenomenal job. He don't get talked about enough. Um, but we talked about it earlier, how we wished our coach, you know, versus a divisional rival come out there ready to go, ready to play ready to do what we got to do to win. And that's that's what happened with the 49ers and the Rams. I think, you know, Rams coming off of the Super Bowl uh, high a little bit. Everybody, they know that they got a target. They're going to play everybody best game no matter who they play. And and they know that. And the Rams have some issues. They got to get, you know, fixed as well. They haven't looked sharp all, all year. They haven't looked sharp at all. Uh, so to see the 49ers do that, it wasn't shocking to me, but it was shocking that they just dominated the entire game. It wasn't shocking that they won, but how they won, it was just like, man, like either the 49ers are about to start clicking and be a really damn good football team for the rest of the year, or something is really wrong with the Rams right now, or it's just a weird year in the NFL, however you want to look at it. (laughs) Absolutely. You talk about D'Amico Ryan's going to be a head coach sometime. I'm looking at Chris Koserick, the the D-line coach, as being a possible – defensive coordinator. Now I'm assuming that the Niners are probably going to want to bump him up because he's, he's the guy I wanted as the defensive coordinator for the Colts earlier this year, just the way, you know, the energy he brings and the way he coaches. I love that. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, keep an eye on him. I think, I think uh, obviously they've already got a, a former DC that became a head coach in Sa- uh, Sala uh, mm-hmm. over there. So uh, they're, they're continuing to just pump guys out. Uh, yeah, that's what they. Yeah, you're right. Because D'Amico Ryan was the linebacker coach mm-hmm. when Sala was there, so they bumped D'Amico up. And yeah, 49ers probably will do it from within uh, rather than going from outside. Thank you for watching Gerard Powers and I here on Believe in Colts, part of the Believe Podcast Network. Don't forget to smash that like button, hit subscribe if you're not subscribed, and tag that notification bell so that you're notified next time we upload a video or go live. And don't forget, you can hit that little red share button. Help us out a lot with exposure and getting our stuff out to more fans. Now, let's get back to the video. Absolutely. So what was the biggest shock of the week, do you think? The biggest shock of the week. 
I, I, maybe the Giants. Maybe the Giants starting off three and one, and maybe the Eagles as being the best team in the NFL. Maybe can we? Can we? Is it okay to say that right now? Maybe Jay they're the only undefeated team. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and all off season, everybody doubted Jalen Hurts. He's not the quarterback. He can't do this and he can't do that. And the guys, the early season favorite for MVP right now, and they're fun to watch too. So maybe the Giants and the Eagles are my two just biggest surprise. I didn't, I didn't, I knew the Eagles would be, I mean, they're competitive every year, don't get me wrong, but I didn't think they'll look as good. I mean, their defense looked phenomenal, the offense looked phenomenal, but I did not expect the damn Giants to be three and one right now. So shout out to Saquon and uh those guys over there in the New York staff getting the job done. I mean, legitimately. The team, the the division that we have called the NFC least for years now. Years, <laughs> uh, we're we're looking at you know the Eagles are four and zero, the Giants are three and one, the Cowboys are three and one. I mean, they're looking like an actual powerhouse division now. When when uh, four weeks in, that's that's crazy, absolutely that crazy. crazy. <laughs> um. A, a game that I thought was a little bit shocking, and again, it's it's not uh, on the aspect of of uh, who won, it's how it was won, was that Bills-Ravens game. Um, oh, that was a good game. That was a damn good game. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was that was a, it, uh, that that came down to it was one of the tightest games I have seen in eons, mm-hmm. uh, and and. And I didn't expect that. I expected this to be a, a little bit more of an offense. I, I thought there was going to be more points. I get there was, you know, 2023, 20, but both of these defenses are completely obliterated uh, by injury. Injuries, yep. And yep. yet somehow these defenses showed up. And, 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 you know, we talk about that next man up mentality, and they legitimately did that this week. Yeah, they did. Um, Poyer, man, the safety uh, for the Bills had a hell of a game. He had two picks, some uh, key red zone interceptions. Uh, but another thing that probably played a role in the points being so low is uh, the conditions. It was red, it was wet, a little rainy, ball a little slick. Um, you saw Josh Allen running it, scrambling a little more than normal. Uh, Diggs couldn't really, you know, get open. I mean, even though both of these defenses got, you know, some key guys that's hurt, they still got some damn key, some key guys that can still play some good football. So, I mean, it was a battle. Uh, I, that was another game that I watched. I mean, you see the Ravens jump up on them early, but didn't nobody – the whole time I was watching the game, even though the Ravens, I, th- I want to say, was up 20-0 to zero at one point, you knew the Bills was going to come back, just how the game was played. Uh, so, but that was that was a fun game to watch. Hopefully, down the road we'll see them in a divisional playoff game or AFC Championship or something like that, uh, to where you know that that rematch uh, definitely happened. That was a fun game to watch with um, Lamar Jackson versus Josh Allen. All right, so we talk about it all the time: how one year is not the same as the next. Uh, teams are not the same as the year prior. There are. An enormous, I, I can't even pronounce that word. Uh, an enor- we'll just say uh, there's a lot of two and two teams right now in the NFL uh, after four weeks. And I want to know who you think is the best and the worst two and two team right now. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to name them off. All right. All right. We, got, all right. We, we got the Niners. We got the Rams. We got the Buccaneers. You got the Broncos, you got the Cardinals, the Jets, the Jaguars, the Bears, the Titans, the Chargers, the Seahawks, the Ravens, Falcons, and then the Browns and the Bengals. Holy crap, mm. there's a lot of two and two teams. <laughs> uh, the, the best two and two team, oh, that is tough. I'm, I'm going to have to probably say Tampa, the Bucks as the best two and two team. I know they didn't look good, you know, last week it happens or whatnot, but 
Um, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you know, count them playing the way that they played last week, you know, too often. So I expect them to be a whole lot better rest of the year. But I'll say the Bucks, best two and two team. I wanted, I was probably going to lean towards the Chargers. Not really sure how Herbert uh, Rib is feeling and all that type stuff. But I was high on the Chargers at the beginning of the year. They just got, they got a, a damn good roster. Uh, the worst two and two team. I'm going to say the Bears. I'm going to say the Bears is the worst two and two team. Um, still just got a lot of stuff they got to fix, even though they're playing a lot better than they played last year. Don't get me wrong. Uh, still got a lot of things that they need to fix and uh, got to get some better players over there as well. Absolutely. I, I agree with you on the worst two and two team. I mean, the Bears offense ain't been able to move the football at all. Mm -hmm. uh, passing wise is it's it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, I, I, I don't think there's been an offense that has thrown the ball the least amount, uh, than the bears have when it comes to, you know, just yards a game. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's embarrassing. The, the, the defense is, is keeping them in games and that's granted that's been the bears kind of forte for the last few years too, is the defense has kept them in games, yep. uh, two and two best two and two team. There's a lot of good ones to choose from. I mean, you got the it Bengals. Is. You know, the Bengals are are are. I mean, they're you know the former you know Super Bowl contender, right? Um, you got the Rams, who were former Super Bowl champion. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, the Niners, a bunch of bunch of guys. I am going to go with, however, in my opinion, looking at the two and twos. I kind of got to go with the Chargers. Once this team starts getting healthy, they'll probably be a much better team overall. Um, it's just, it's between them and the Ravens, in my opinion. Uh, mm -hmm. Just just because of the, the injuries, I think, is what's really holding both of these teams back. And once they get those injuries um, kind of figured out, because not a lot of these injuries are, are you know, season ending. They're just kind of, you know, you're going to miss it's a guy. Up right yeah. Yep. Kind of couple, yep. couple out for a little while. They come back. I think they're going to be uh very, very tough outs. They're already tough outs as it, as is like, like we just talked about the Ravens and the bills game. I mean, you know, the chargers just uh, put 34 points up uh, offensively with a banged up, you know, um, as you said, Justin Herbert. So uh, that's, that's, those are the two teams. I, I, I can't really pick one over the other because they're kind of equal right now. I got in you. my eyes. Who's uh, your worst? Yeah, the Bears. Bears, the Bears. That's right. You agree yeah, with the Bears. Yeah, the yeah. Bears. By far, the Bears. Uh, so you I do mean, agree that the Eagles are the best team, even though they're undefeated, undefeated. You agree that the Eagles best team in the league? Well, at this point, we're four weeks in. You are what your record says you are. There you go. I like that. You are what your records say you are. I like that. <laughs> well, I mean, that's that's a cliche that has been said since I can't remember the coach that said that. I think it was the Giants coach, was it? I can't uh, remember. Parcells. Was it Parcells? I think so. I think so. I'm not I'm not a, a hundred percent, don't one hundred percent quote me on that, but yeah, I mean uh now you can't say that too early in the season, obviously. But once you get into there, your record is what you what it says you are. So, uh, any any final thoughts or closing thoughts about uh, this past week? No, nah, man, it's been a fun, and I, I love when you know the NFL across the board is pretty balanced, like it is now when it comes to the records and all those type of things, because. You know, a lot of times as a fan, a lot of people would complain late in the year about guys sitting, by guys not playing and all this type of stuff. When it's balanced like this, every week's going to matter. So it just makes it makes it more fun to watch. So I, I love it when uh, you just you can't predict who's going to win. Absolutely. Uh, from one week to another, except for maybe the Eagles. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> as we just got done talking about. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. We're going to be doing this every week or listening either way, you know, whether you're on the audio podcast or video podcast, either way, make sure you subscribe. If you're watching this on a video, please smash that like button and share to your favorite social media. We will be talking not only about the Indianapolis Colts, but we will have this one episode every week where 
Gerard, Rodney McLeod, and I will be talking just general NFL stuff as well. And until next time, I'm Lawrence Owen. That was Gerard Powers. And as usual, this was Believe in Colts brought to you by Bet Online. Have a good one. Do you believe? 